We are at Beta Universe. I stopped by the Starburst booth and I wanted to chat with the CEO and co-founder, Justin Borgman. Hey, Justin, how's it going? Good. Great to be with you. Absolutely. So you had a keynote at Beta Nova last year where you talked about the five data lies. And one of those lies was that organizations are not quite ready for the AI and ML deep end. Yep. Let's start with what is the deep end? Is it like a pool? Are we jumping in? <laughs> yes, and it's quite deep, actually. <laughs> and I think organizations are recognizing that while the uh, motivation for AI projects is extremely high and boards are asking people, hey, what's our AI strategy? There's a lot of work to be done to even prepare yourself for your AI strategy. And that was really the intention behind my keynote last year was that I don't think companies are fully ready to, to actually get value out of AI today. And, and there's a lot of work to be done to get there. Okay, so that was last year. Yep. What are your thoughts now? Did you change your mind or not? No, I think it's just become less controversial. I think everybody's sort of recognized that. And what we're seeing is a renewed interest in building the underlying infrastructure to support AI. How do I get access to the data that I need? My models are only as good as the data that I train them on. Getting the governance right. right. So. And we hear about something called AI-ready data. And I've heard this at every conference I've been to in the past few months. We need AI-ready data, we can't be without it. What tips do you have, what advice can you share for organizations to actually get ready for that deep end? I, I think it is uh, getting a couple things uh, fundamentally in place. One is uh, on the governance side of things, uh, having the right access controls, uh, you know, row level, column level, data masking, attribute-based access control to tag the right data and ensure that we're not inputting data into the models that we shouldn't, right? right. Uh, and so I think that's one foundational piece. I think another is you're seeing renewed interest in uh, lake houses from the standpoint of wanting to centralize some data in a low cost, economical way where I can store mass amounts of data and perform analytics within that. And so I think you're seeing Iceberg's popularity rise dramatically as a result as a very cost-effective, open way of storing and managing your data. Absolutely, and I know Starburst is doing a lot of cool new things, so I wanted to ask, how does AI actually fit into your product roadmap? Yeah, in a couple different areas. Um, certainly, we've built uh, the ability to use natural language and translate that into SQL queries. I think a number of other players are doing that as well. But probably the feature I'm most excited about, and it goes back to the governance piece, is doing automatic classification of data, being able to tag it. You know, PII data needs to be tagged PII data, and that's super important and can sometimes be susceptible to human error. So we've built some, some abilities to actually do that automatically for you. And uh, we think that will help save a tremendous amount of time and provide you know, good accuracy on, on what needs to be tagged uh, as PII. That is very important. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, and I've actually walked around and I've seen the term ice house, and I yep. you talked about that in your keynote. Yeah. So tell us, what is the ice house? Is it cold? <laughs> <laughs> yes, very cold. <laughs> cold as ice. But no, so the, the ice house is really all about a open data lake house where iceberg is the storage and Trino is the query engine. Okay. And we've really been building up to this over years. When Iceberg was created at Netflix, it was created to pair with Trino. So actually the first queries ever run on Iceberg were Trino queries. And it's a very natural pairing in the community. We see it all the time. Uh, in fact, probably the only criticism I received about the Ice House blog that we wrote recently was that a lot of people were already doing it. You know, mm -hmm. we're really just calling attention to a pattern that already exists which is all about creating a open lake house. So store the data in Iceberg, query it with Trino. That's the essential elements. And then what we really announced today or, or yesterday was all of the extra features to make this easy. How do you ingest data from a streaming data source? How do you turn that into Iceberg tables? How do you do compaction and data maintenance and profiling and lineage and all these other aspects that you need to provide a true data warehouse-like experience, right. but all based off of Iceberg. So that's what we want to deliver to customers is a turnkey, kind of easy button for getting value out of Iceberg. We love the easy button. Yes. And is that available today or is that in the future? Uh, a lot of it is available today. We've also articulated some of our roadmap mm -hmm. uh, and directionally where we're going as well. But you can absolutely uh, try it out today. So, Justin, it's been a real pleasure chatting with you today. I just wanted to ask if people have questions and want to learn more, where can they go to learn more about Starburst? Yeah, it was my pleasure. Uh, they can go to starburst.io. 
Uh, they can check out the Ice House Manifesto where we talk all about all the essential components of an ice house and subscribe to our social channels and, and stay up to date. Amazing, thank you. Thank you.